We're dealing with heretics. That's right, the H word. Heretics. Last week on February 2nd, Francis Bergoglio denied two articles of the Apostles' Creed. We believe in the Catholic Church. We believe in the communion of saints. Denied two articles of the Apostles' Creed, which we affirm when we are baptized, or our godparents affirm in our name that we believe in them. A lot of people got upset. Taylor, don't say the H word. That's too dangerous. Don't say the H word. Same people who said, hey, Taylor, don't say the I word, idolatry, when the Pachamamas were trattered out. Oh, it, it's a symbol. It's enculturation. No, it's idolatry. A lot of people on social media are upset with me right now because I use the actual theological terms for these problems. So when you deny articles of the Apostles' Creed publicly, that's heresy. When you worship statues that are not depicting God or the saints, holy people, persons, that's idolatry. I don't understand why in 2022 that's controversial. Well, I do, because people have been catechized to believe all kinds of crazy things. Today, we're going to look at this. This is Cardinal Jean-Claude Holrich. Cardinal Holerick has announced that the church's teaching on sodomy is no longer correct. He's also pro-women's ordination. And Francis has appointed him to be over the new synod of synodality. Synodality. It's funny. Every time I type that into my notes, my spell corrector always said synodality is not a word. So today we're going to look at Cardinal Holrick in the upcoming Synod on Synodality. Before I do, I just want to answer some of those who are now opposed to me or who are taking objection to using the H word, because I'm saying Holrick here is heretical. It's getting people upset. You're saying a cardinal's heretical. You're saying a pope teaches heresy. You can't do that. I'm going to share with you a quote from St. Robert Bellarmine. St. Robert Bellarmine. I'm coming to like St. Robert Bellarmine a lot more, learning a lot from him. Here's what St. Robert Bellarmine, doctor of the church, has to say. He says, quote, I'm reading right here, Oop, right here. For men are not bound or able to read hearts, but when they see that someone is a heretic, by his external works, they judge him to be a heretic, pure and simple, and condemn him as a heretic. St. Robert Bellarmine, De Romano Pontifice, Book 2, Chapter 30. What is key here for Robert Bellarmine, St. Robert Bellarmine? That when, that when they see someone as a heretic by his external works, they judge him to be a heretic, pure and simple. This man, by his works in his words, Cardinal Horrick, is a heretic. Pope Francis, also, by denying two articles of the Apostles' Creed, we're not talking about intricate points of theology. We're talking about the Apostles' Creed. Heretic. And I really believe moving forward, to help solve the crisis in the church, we start using the proper terminology as given to us, for example, by St. Robert Bellarmine. We don't need to be hiding the truth or afraid. Someone says, I think you're going to get excommunicated, Taylor. What? So we're going to stop doing the right thing and using the right terms because someone may try to excommunicate us. No. All right, so let's pray. We'll pray the Our Father in Latin, and we'll learn more about Cardinal Jean-Claude Holrich and other things going on in Europe as we approach the Synod on Synodality. Oremus. Nomine Patris et Fidei et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Pater Noster, qui es in Celi, Sancti Vicetur Nomen Tum, 
advenia regnum tuum, fiat voluntas tua secut in cello et in terra. Panem nostrum quotidianum da nobis odie, et emite nobis debita nostra, sicut et nos dimittimus debitoribus nostris, et ne nos inducas in tentationem, se libera nos a malo. Amen. Nomini Patris, Fidii, et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. So today is a day of clarity. It's using the proper vocabulary. It's using a biblical worldview. That's why I say read the Bible every single day. Study sacred tradition. Study the magisterium. Read good catechesis like the Catechism on the Council. By the way, I didn't even go into it. But Pope Francis doesn't just contradict word for word Pius XII. He also contradicts the Catechism of the Council of Trent on the Articles of the Catholic Church and on the Communion of Saints. Francis is contradicting magisterial statements. They can't both be right. Yeah, Taylor, don't say that. Don't say that. They can't both be right. Okay, Cardinal. Oh, before I get to Cardinal Holrick, uh, here's also, God, do I have another picture of Cardinal Holrick? He is from Luxembourg. There he is. That's Cardinal Holrick. Before I get to Cardinal Holrick, let's look at another wolf in sheep clothing. The president of the Council of the Bishops' Conferences of Europe. Gintaris, sorry, I can't, my eyes aren't good here, Grusas, Archbishop of Vilnius, Lithuania, said that the foundation of Catholic sexual doctrine is no longer correct and requires a fundamental revision, which is echoing the words, as we'll see, of Cardinal Horik. The new, and in, not brew, but in their eyes, the new and improved rainbow version of Catholicism is that Catholic sexual doctrine is no longer correct. You see, the whole hermeneutic, hermeneutic of continuity is exploding before our eyes. We were having fun with the hermeneutic of continuity by showing the old hermeneutic of continuity horse. I always promised myself to have it ready to put on the screen, and for some reason... I always don't, but you know the one I'm talking about. I've been putting it up here for years. And there's a lot of people out there in Catholicism who say, no, hermeneutic continuity, we can make this work. No, they're telling you right here that the old Catholicism of the past uh, uh, 1,950 some odd years is wrong and we need to get the new version, just like we need the new mass and we need the new seven sacraments and the new canon law the new way of canonizing saints. Everything's new, 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 new catechism. All the old stuff to them is dangerous and bad. And if someone just comes along and says, no, the old way was better, they get upset. They want to cancel you. They want to take away your Latin mass. I've been thinking about, let me know if y'all want this. I've been thinking about doing a series on YouTube where I do traditional verse new. It would be a series of shorter videos where I'd say traditional exorcism versus the new exorcism. Traditional uh, book of blessings versus the new book of blessings. The traditional baptism versus new baptism. Traditional confirmation versus new confirmation. And we could go on and on and on. I would just compare the text and the rituals and the prayers. The traditional way of canonizing saints, the new way of canonizing saints. And just put it all side by side. Be a lot of work. But I think it would be interesting. So yeah, this guy right here, Lithuania, he says that the church's uh, sexual theology is no longer correct. We need to update it. We need a novus ordo theology of sexual identity. With that in mind, let me read you something here from Cardinal Jean-Claude Holrich. That's heretical. Let's just say the H word. All right. Cardinal Holrich. Maybe it's Holrich. I don't know. He, um, on October 5th, 2019, Pope Francis made him Cardinal Priest of San Giovanni 
Chris Estomo in Montesacro Alto. Interviewed shortly after, he supported the ordination of married men to the Catholic priesthood. Often people, while we're being frank, and while I'm telling you what I really think, people often ask me, what do you think about Anglican ordinariate? Well, some people don't know, I used to be an Anglican priest, an Episcopalian clergyman. I was actually in the process to be ordained a Catholic priest. I was a candidate for holy orders in the Archdiocese of Washington, D.C., initially under Cardinal McCarrick and then Archbishop, then Archbishop Whirl. That's my origin story. I got out of it. And one of the problems, I think, with the Anglican ordinariate, although it has communion on the knees and many traditional elements, is you're constantly with married priests, married priesthood. And I just think for children and for the example, it's I, I'm just not a fan. And I think some of y'all can understand why. Anyway, Cardinal Holrick here. And I, I honestly sensed, by the way, I could sense from the, the liberal monsignors and chancery people that they wanted me to become a married priest because it would be subversive. And one of the reasons why I didn't become a married Catholic priest, although I could have been one, is I didn't want to be part of a subversive culture where I would wear a Roman collar and have my pretty wife, Joy, and my eight kids in tow. And I kind of felt like I was being used by the, the liberal hierarchy to sort of subvert. Just as Cardinal Holrick here, what's he do when he gets made? He wants ordination of married men. He said, I love my celibacy, I stand by it, but I see that married deacons can preach differently than I do. And I find that it is itself a wonderful addition. He was made a member of Pontifical Council of Culture in 2020 and a member of Pontifical Council for Interreligious Dialogue on July 8th, 2020. Now, here's the interesting part. He's going to talk about COVID and he's going to get into gay relationships. Are you all ready? All right. In September 2020, Horick suggested that the limitations placed by the COVID-19 pandemic on access to the sacraments and church instruction programs will result in a smaller church. Yeah, no joke. No joke. Because those who attend for cultural reasons will have learned to live without the church. That could be it, or it might just be that people were told sacraments and mass are non-essentials, so why do we need this anyway? His thought is only exacerbated, um, he thought this only exacerbated current trends because, quote, this merely cultural Catholicism cannot last over time. He also said he supported asking the big questions, but hoped the anticipated German synod would recognize its obligation to the church, church worldwide. Now, I want to pause here. Why is it that the German Senate is somehow pontificating or issuing decrees to the church worldwide? You see, that's how these liberals think. These Germans who voted, by the way, in favor of revising the church's doctrinal teaching on same-sex relations and voted in favor of women deacons. This just happened last week. We lost track of it because Pope Francis was saying heretical things about the church and communion of saints. You see, they really think that the Germans, and it has been, remember a river, uh, what has it go? Uh, the Rhine flows into the Tiber, the old book on Vatican II. German heresy, German modernism flowed into Rome at Vatican II. Cardinal Holrich. He thought the most important question was the role of women in the church and expressed a willingness to consider the ordination of women. So this cardinal, who has been appointed as the leader of the next synod on synodality by Francis himself, is open, he's questioning regarding married priests, the ordination of women, the role of women in the hierarchy, in the synod process. And then the real zinger is 2022. Cardinal Holrick said, let me see if I have it to put on the screen. 
think I do. Yeah, here we go. There it is. Cardinal Holrick said he considered the church's assessment of gay relationships as sinful to be wrong. I believe that the sociological scientific foundation of this teaching is no longer correct. By the way, he said that on February 2nd, 2022, the same day Francis was having his general audience teaching heresy on two articles of the Apostles' Creed. It's like they wanted to choose February 2nd, the purification of the Blessed Virgin Mary, as a day to spew and to vomit out heresy into the church. This. Yeah, Taylor, but don't talk about that. Don't talk about that. If we're nice to these heretical, liberal, modernist bishops, they might let us have a traditional Latin Mass. So let's zip our lips, and hopefully, if we appease these monsters in the church, they'll let us have a traditional Latin Mass. I love the traditional Latin Mass, but that's not enough. I want traditional theology, and traditional bishops, and a traditional pope. Not a heretic. Not cardinals that teach ordination of married men, ordination of women, and let's change the doctrine on same-sex relationships. You know, Francis isn't that bad. We've always had bad popes. He's teaching heresy, and he's appointing this guy to run the next synod on synodality. I read this morning that some have speculated that Francis's number one pick for his successor as Pope is actually Cardinal Holrich, or Holrich. Anybody out there from Luxembourg that knows how to pronounce it correctly so I can say it correctly, I'd appreciate it. Please leave a comment or in the live chat. I'd appreciate that. Also, thanks for all the likes and the shares. And if you're new, please do subscribe. You can do that in the right corner. Hit the bell. So yeah, Cardinal Holrich says, I believe that the sociological scientific foundation of this teaching is no longer correct. And look at how he's doing it. He's not going to come right out and say, yeah, 1900 years of theology is definitely wrong. He's going to go, the sociological scientific foundation of this teaching is no longer correct. So he's going to bring in sociologists and scientists, and they're all going to say that a dude can marry a dude, and a lady can marry a lady, and we should bless it. Because the German bishops are voting in favor by a large and wide majority that there should be same-sex blessings in the Catholic Church. Last year, they did a whole bunch of same-sex blessings in the Catholic Church in Germany. And what did Francis Bergoglio do? Jack diddly squat. He was too busy writing documents in order to suppress the traditional Latin mass. While sodomy was being blessed inside the churches built by Catholic faithful over the last few centuries. And you're going to whisper to me and you're going to direct message me and say, Taylor, don't say this. It's dangerous. You know what? It's dangerous if we don't say it. Archbishop Nestorius, he was the Archbishop of Constantinople, the second most important diocese, second only to Rome. On Christmas Day, he got up into the ambo. And he said that Our Lady, the Immaculate Blessed Virgin Mary, was not the Theotokos. She was not the bearer of God. She was not the mother of God. She gave birth to a human, but not to the Son of God. And there was a man in church that day at the Divine Liturgy of St. John Chrysostom who called 
out, he was a layman, he called out the archbishop as a heretic during the liturgy. And that layman, Eusebius is his name, was later made a bishop by the church because they recognize his orthodoxy and that he was a hero for the true faith. So don't come up here in the comments or on Twitter and say, Taylor, you can't say that. You shouldn't say that. That's bad. You're dividing the church. You're leading people out of the church. No, it's the heretics who are dividing the church. It's the heretics who are chasing the sheep out of the fold. It's the heretics who, like wolves, are closing their jaws in on the throats of the sheep. People are saying this is like the truckers in Canada. Yeah, I guess. Honk for tradition. I'm just going to put this quote back on the screen because I think people who are worried about Taylor Marshall this week, worried that he's saying the H word in heretic, worried that I'm speaking so frankly, and I've been speaking frankly for a long time, but when you see this kind of stuff, you got to call it for what it is. St. Robert Bellarmine, for your review. For men are not bound or able to read hearts, but when they see that someone is a heretic by his external works, they judge him to be a heretic, pure and simple, and condemn him as a heretic, end quote, St. Robert Bellarmine. This man's a heretic. Francis. Heretic, in the public, word for word, denying what Pius XII taught. Heretic. That someone is a heretic by his external works. They judge him to be a heretic, pure and simple, and condemn him as a heretic. When Eusebius was in the divine liturgy of St. John Chrysostom, and heard Nestorius spew forth the vomit of heresy during the divine liturgy, he called him out in it. He didn't say, well, maybe I should wait after Mass. Wait, maybe I'm just a stupid layman who doesn't know theology. I don't want to be disrespectful. I don't want to cause a scene. I don't want to disrupt liturgy. No. And history vindicated Eusebius, and it condemned Nestorius as a heresiarch, an arch-heretic. The balls got rolling because Eusebius raised his voice against the heresy. All we can do is use the right terminology. And again, I'll say it again. I'm a dad with a webcam. I'm not a priest. I'm not a monsignor not a bishop, an archbishop, cardinal, or a pope. I can't call an imperfect council. I can't call a perfect council. I can't invite myself to the synod on synodality, though I would like to say that if I were invited to give an address at the synod on synodality, I would happily fly over there and be part of it. And I would enjoy being receiving accompaniment in sharing my vision for what I hope the church can return to. It's nothing new. It's just back to what we always were. So, if you think I'm too far, I shouldn't be using the H word, it's okay for a man to put on a white cassock and repudiate a pope before him who wore a white cassock. It's okay for him to deny two articles of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in the Catholic Church and the communion of saints. If you think it's okay for Cardinal Jean-Claude Holric to say we need to renounce or we need to change the church's teaching, Just unsubscribe. Don't watch me anymore. 
It's not a game. And for those of you that are worried, saying, well, I mean, can I believe that? I mean, the Pope, I mean, is this the kind of stuff we can, what, is this all right? I got a quote for you here. It's from Pope Innocent III. Let me give you the dates on Innocent III. Hold on just a second. Here we go. He died in 1216. 1216. He was Pope from 1198 to 1216. So this is right like at the beginning of like getting into the life of, of St. Francis of Assisi. All right. That's what we're talking about here. Time period. Thomas Aquinas dies in 1274. So this Pope dies in 1216. Here's the quote. It is necessary to obey a Pope in all things as long as he does not go against the universal customs of the church. But should he go against the universal customs of the church, he need not be followed, end quote. That's Pope Innocent III. So yes, we have to obey the Pope. We must be subject to the Pope to be saved. But if he goes against the customs of the church, We don't need to obey. If he says you cannot be separated from the church, you cannot be separated from the communion of saints, even with apostasy, he says you can deny your baptism and you are at home. Those are his words, not mine. That's heresy. We do not go along with that. We resist it. And we say that is heresy. If he should go, Pope Innocent III, but if he should go against the universal customs of the church, he need not be followed. In other words, if he said, stop baptizing infants, we would reject that to his face. And by the way, Pope Innocent III in the 1200s, he's not saying it's impossible. He's saying if it should happen, do not follow him. So yeah, let's call a spade a spade. Let's call a heresy a heresy. Let's call a schism a schism. And let's call an idol an idol. You see a Pachamama and you see people carrying it around and worshiping down on their knees with the face of the earth. Worship. It's idolatry. And Pope Francis encouraged idolatry for the whole church. It's on video. It's on camera. We've shown it over and over. And he's promoting heresy. It's destruction in the vineyard of Jesus Christ. And it's heresy. All right, let's pray a Hail Mary. Just say a Hail Mary for the enemies of Christ in the church, the infiltrators. Say Hail Mary. Oremos. Nomini Patris et Fidei et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum. Benedicta tu in mulieribus et benedictus fructus ventris tu Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, or pro nobis peccatoribus. Nunc et ador mortis nostre. Amen. St. Joseph, pray for us. St. Michael, pray for us. Let's say a prayer. Let's say the St. Michael prayer. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Nomini Patris et Fidei et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. All right, let's take these take the her heresy off. I thought this image was powerful of the wolf in the sheep clothing. Like I said last week, I'm not a shepherd. You're not a shepherd unless you're a bishop watching this. When wolves come in, let me put it back up. Here's the picture. When wolves come into the sheepfold, all I can do is go, bah, bah, look out, alert, alert. There's a wolf among us. But I'm not a bishop and I'm not a cardinal. I'm not a pope. I can't get out my crozier. You know what the crozier is? It's a shepherd's staff. Traditionally, on one end, it has a, a hook so you can get the lamb around the neck and pull him away. On the other end, traditionally, in the Catholic Church, there was a spike. A weapon for stabbing. 
I don't have one of those. I don't wear a miter. I don't wear the pallium. Just a dad with a webcam. All I can do is bah. And shame on the bishops who do nothing while the wolves encircle us and lick their lips and snap their jaws at us while shepherds do nothing. And all we sheep can do is say, bah, and let the other ones know, don't get killed. Don't believe the heresy. Don't drink the poison. Don't get bitten. <laughs> Raphael says, bah, for tradition. Exactly. Bah, for tradition. It's a shame. You know, like you, you heard, come on here, Jesse Romero talked about they're going to have exorcisms and priests and bishops in Arizona where they're going to try to consecrate the town and the state to Satan. Well, guess what happened? The bishops backed out. Now it's lay people going up against Satanists. The shepherd said, we're out of here, sheep. Y'all go in and fight the Satanists. That's effeminate and it's cowardly. There, I'm going to use real terms. We're using terms like idolatry and heresy. When bishops back out, of their vocation to fight Satanism. When Satanists are trying to consecrate geography in their diocese to Satan and they don't do anything and they leave it up to the lay people, that's effeminate and it's cowardly. They're leaving the sheep alone. It's just like when the statues of saints, like Junipero Serra, were being torn down in California and the lay people were going out there and protecting the statues and praying the rosary. And the bishops were doing nothing. And Bishop Barron says, it's not my job. It's the lay people's job. And then there was a huge pushback against Barron. And then he started showing up after that. Thank God. You know, people, men are consecrated to be bishops not to chill in the rectory. Not just to travel around and do confirmation. They're made bishops to be successors of the apostles, to protect the faith and protect the people. Somebody said the bishops need to protect the laity against Taylor Marshall. I say the bishops need to protect the laity, period. What do you say? Am I going too far? I'm actually kind of surprised. I'm looking up here. There's only six... Uh, thumbs down, six non-likes, 694 likes. I'm surprised. I honestly thought more people would say, yeah, I'm done with Taylor Marshall. Thumb down. Like, here's a guy right here, Taylor Marshall is schismatic. No, I'm not. How dare you say I'm schismatic? I believe every jot and tittle of the Catholic faith. I'm a member of a Catholic church. I recognize the sacraments, the tradition, every word of the Bible. How am I a schismatic? Have I left the Catholic Church? Have I apostatized? Have I uttered heresy? Have I said, stop attending the Catholic Church? Stop attending mass. I'm not doing that anymore. I'm not. No. How are people saying that I'm a schismatic? I'm not. It's the same people who say, don't say H word, Taylor. Don't say H word. And yet they call me a schismatic. I've not left the Catholic church. I have not renounced the Catholic faith. And there's been no bishop or pope who has excommunicated me or declared me a schismatic. So who are you, anonymous person on Twitter? Who are you, anonymous person on Facebook, anonymous person on YouTube, to declare all of a sudden that I am in schism with the Catholic Church? You're wrong, and you're accusing me of mortal sin in public. So let's defend the faith as best as we can as lay people. And I think that moment... In the history of the church with Nestorius and Eusebius the layman, I think it's now here. 
it kind of needs to be a Canadian trucker moment. Perhaps where tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of lay people, when you're in mass and the priest says Jesus wasn't fully God, you say, that's heresy, Father. Take that back. Repent. Remember when Francis said, when he denied the two articles of the Apostles' Creed, a man stood up and called out Francis and begged him. I showed the footage. Go back and see my show from last week. What if hundreds of thousands of people, when they saw liturgical abuse, Eucharistic abuse, heresy in the pulpit, a priest says, all religions are equal. All religions lead to God. That's heresy, Father. Christ says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. That's what the Son of God teaches. You're preaching heresy. That time, I think, has come. You may say that I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. There are thousands of you Hundreds of thousands of you. It's like the Canadian trucker move, uh, movement. One person alone, nothing. Tens of thousands of people demanding clarity on finances at the local diocese. Catholic charities. Human trafficking with Catholic donation money. Peter's Pence money is going to fund Elton John documentary Rocket Man. Going to fund luxurious condos in London. Abuse covered up. The money of good Catholic people that they've donated for churches. Churches being closed down. Churches used for legal settlement, settlements and lawyer fees for bad decisions made by bishops for corrupting priests. What if tens of thousands of us said no more and we called them out? Just like you see in Chicago, people are outside the cathedral in Chicago. They're outside the bishop's residence with signs praying and saying no more. All right, well, we already prayed the Hail Mary. I'll just say, pray the rosary every day. That's your weapon. You know, maybe you just go down to the local cathedral or bishop's residence and you pray that rosary. Maybe people line up outside St. Peter's Basilica, outside the window of the Pope, and pray that rosary. Say, no more heresy. Either way, pray the rosary every day. Someone yesterday, I said, please pray for me. And so many people did pray for me. As you can tell, I'm a little worked up. I've been attacked heavily over the last six, seven days by friends, by foes, by people I appreciate and respect, by people who have always attacked me. And someone said, I hope at the end of the day, Taylor, that you forget all of this and you just have a nice dinner and time with your family. And I do. I do. But also, this is one reason why I say pray the rosary every day. In the evenings after dinner, our family, it's around 8 to 8.45 is when we begin our rosary. And I pray for all the audience here. Our family prays for you. But that's a moment at the end of every day where YouTube doesn't matter, Twitter doesn't matter. Vatican doesn't matter. All that stuff is shut off. And we're together as a family with the lights dim low and candles burning before the Theotokos, the Blessed Virgin Mary. And we're praying as a family in unison together. We're connected to Jesus Christ through Mary, through the Theotokos. That is a source of peace. It's not escape, but it's being more properly united to Jesus Christ. So again, 
pray the rosary every day because she asked you to do it, because popes have asked you to do it, but also because it's that parentheses in your life where you truly are face to face with God. Of course, the Mass does that for us as well, but we can't always attend Mass. At the end of the day, it's basically impossible to get to a Mass as you wind down after dinner. But the Rosary is that parenthesis. It is that hermitage at the end of the day. So pray the rosary every day or you're not on the team. That's another thing. People get so mad at me when I say pray the rosary every day or you're not on the team. Just take a deep breath. Put the brick down. Pray the rosary. And please do pray for me. I am getting a lot of attacks. And uh, it's good to know that people pray and and encourage. So thank you for all of you that do that. I do appreciate that. All right. We already said the prayer. We already said the Hail Mary. So thanks for watching. Thanks to all the Patreons at patreon.com forward slash DR Taylor Marshall. That support as well. I've appreciated all of your kind words and your goodness as well. And remember, our Lord Jesus Christ is you're the light of the world and the salt of the earth. So go out there and be salty and be heard. God bless and Godspeed.